Hi everyone, hope all of you are well. Today I want to talk about participation as a graded component of courses in college and university. It does depend on your major and the courses within your major that you take, but I think it's almost inevitable that some of your courses will have a component of your final grade, sometimes as low as 5%, sometimes as high as 25%, that will be based on your participation in the class. Now, usually the professor will, in the course syllabus or outline, give their description or criteria for how they will assess in-class participation. And it's necessary for them to be transparent like this because otherwise it can appear kind of arbitrary to decide between whether student A or student B participated better. But unfortunately, this description in the syllabus is usually not of much help. Unless it has specific instructions like come to every class with an article that you research that you're going to discuss or something like that, most of the time the professor's criteria will be fairly generic and not give you much practical insight into what will work well. Really, the best way to see how to effectively participate in a given class is a matter of trial and error. Both your own trial and errors and observing the trial and errors of your classmates. So what does success or failure look like in this context? Well, your professor is unlikely to ever explicitly say that was great participation or that was poor participation to students in the class, but you can still pick up on whether the professor was impressed, interested, and enthusiastic about yours or another student's contribution in the in-class discussion. The professor's expectations vary, and so do the type of discussions between different courses, because some are more open-ended and theoretical, whereas others are more application-based and thus the participation in the class is about trying to reach a solution to a given problem. Nevertheless, there are still some general strategies that you can employ to improve your participation in a class. One tactic is the answer plus a question technique. So here, when the professor asks a question that has a solution, so for instance like a question based on an assigned practice problem, you answer that question and then you ask a question of your own on a related tangent. With this related question, you want to ask something that shows you are thinking and trying to apply the class materials to ideas that are complex or interesting and not directly covered in your materials, or real world implications or some other application that the professor would like answering and might be cool for your classmates to hear about. So why in this way? Well, you don't want to constantly be raising your hand or interrupting the class with different answers and questions because then it looks like you are just trying to selfishly hear yourself speak and harming the learning experience of others. By using the time you are called on efficiently, you kill two birds with one stone. You both show you can answer the course questions, but you are also interested in ideas and discussions of a wider scope. And that's why I also said you want your answer to be to a question that has a solution. If the professor asks a question that is intended to be open-ended to elicit a wide discussion from you and your classmates, you can't interrupt that by then asking your own question. So try and ask your own question when you are responding to something that is close-ended where the professor expects a solution or a right answer or something like that. Now sometimes you will have a course where there are participation grades but the professor rarely calls on students in class to let them speak or it's difficult to get called on because other students are so active in participating. Sometimes in this latter scenario, when other students are very aggressive in participating, it can kind of derail the ideas or topics that you wanted to talk about, and the class discussion goes in a completely different direction so that the focus is on something you didn't intend to talk about, and you're kind of hesitant about trying to completely change the class's discussion to back to what you wanted originally. With these scenarios, the point is that you're finding yourself in some sort of situation where you want to participate, but you aren't really getting the opportunity to. In these circumstances, you probably want to take some initiative and essentially secure your chance to participate before the class actually begins. So for example, you can email your professor well ahead of the class and send him or her an article or a video or something and your thoughts on it and tell them it would be fascinating to discuss this topic with the class because it relates to the course in some way or another. And of course, if the professor agrees with you that it would be valuable for the class, then when it is actually time for the class, the professor will call on you to explain or discuss whatever you sent them, and you're granted a good chance to participate, because not only are you the starting point for the discussion, you are also the most well-informed on the topic, since it was your suggestion, and you're going to be expected to chime in with whatever additional details or perspective, perspectives that you have in that class. But you don't want to do this every class, because then it can get kind of annoying for your classmates and frankly a lot of work for you to do, but it's something that you can employ from time to time. 
Another tactic that professors will often appreciate and will improve your participation grades is to make your responses target your fellow classmates and to open the discussion to them rather than making the professor the focal point. A lot of times when students participate, it's very obvious by how they are talking and what they're saying that what they're doing is essentially a one-on-one -on -one dialogue with the professor that just happens to be in a classroom with all these other students. But many professors don't like that sort of artificial dialogue, where it's clear it's being done just to impress the professor or to satisfy the participation requirement. Many professors who put participation grades in their courses genuinely want to see a dialogue emerge among classmates. What that means for you is that when you choose to participate, try and incorporate the statements and the names of your fellow classmates to show that you're listening to the discussion and that you are trying to build on the existing discussion that's being had by these students and not just trying to solely talk to the teacher. So when you intend to ask a question, you can try and phrase your question like, I want to hear what the class thinks about this topic, rather than saying, Professor X, what do you think about this topic? The idea here is to show that your participation is authentic in facilitating a class dialogue rather than just getting the attention of the professor. Now, the techniques that I just talked about were about how to participate, and assume that the actual act of participating in a class is not an issue for you, as in you have no issue with public speaking and that you can pay attention and be motivated enough to do it in a classroom setting. But of course, not all students do, and that's not unusual at all. Speaking in front of many classmates and a professor can be difficult, especially for those speaking in their non-native tongue or those with speech impediments or dealing with social or psychological challenges like anxiety. There are clubs and extracurricular activities where students can work on their public speaking skills in smaller, more comfortable, friendlier, and constructive settings. You can use these environments to work on different things like your pacing, speaking volume, eye contact, reducing filler words and ums, improvisation, and more. And so there's no way getting around it that the best way to get better at public speaking is to do more public speaking and to gradually ramp up your public speaking in the classroom to get more comfortable and to allow you to participate as required by your course. However, I should say that if your issues with participation are as a result of a condition or something seriously debilitating, you should have no hesitation to raise this with your professor or the accommodations department of your university to allow them to find an alternative form of participation for your courses. So aside from public speaking difficulties, the other main obstacle for students when it comes to participating in class is interest and focus issues. It's not groundbreaking to say that if a class bores you, you're less likely to participate in it. If you're on your phone or social media during a class, or even struggling to stay awake, then how do you even follow what's going on in order to be able to participate? Well, think about it like this. What do you talk about with your friends? Topics or matters that interest you, right? The point being that if the topics or ideas at hand are something that you maybe care about, you're less likely to see it as burdensome work or studying, and more likely to be enthusiastic, engaged, and voice your own opinions and views about it. So, it follows that the best way to set yourself up to participate in a course is to find elements of the course that are interesting to you and research these things, ask questions about them, stuff that you genuinely care about and aren't forced to say just for the participation grades. So you come to class and follow along to see when and how these interesting elements are covered and then be active in participating when they are. But inevitably, some courses are just very boring. You might have been forced to take a course for your program and you hate it. You can't even seem to find an element of it that interests you so that you would want to discuss it in class. In that case, the best thing to do in order to keep your focus during class is to prepare what you're going to participate with outside of class. You aren't interested enough to stay focused and follow the discussion to participate live during the class, so you can just take advantage of your pre-made question or answers whenever there's an opportunity to do so in class. The logic here is that if you have already done the work of preparing something for the class, you're more likely to at least participate with that work even if most of the class is boring to you. In this fall 2020 semester, many classes are being virtually held, but you may still have participation requirements for your courses, and these strategies are still helpful. In fact, virtually held classes may even assist those who have public speaking difficulties, but on the other hand, it might be even more difficult now to stay focused and engaged during a lecture. See what works for you in this new format in being able to remain engaged and participate effectively. Thanks for watching. Please make sure to give this video a like and drop us a comment and subscribe for more. Until next time.